Wyoming's Yellowstone National Park is one of the most extraordinary places on Earth. It not only has a colossal volcano, but it also has an active geyser field and a number of other hot springs and geothermal features. Visitors can see steam rising from the surface, bubbling mud pots, and even geysers bursting. It's also a great spot to encounter wildlife like bison, elks, antelopes, wolves, and bears. Yellowstone is rather distant due to its location, and the geothermal features can be deadly. Yellowstone National Park covers approximately 3,500 square miles and sits atop a volcano hot zone. The majority of the park is in Wyoming, although some parts extend into Montana and Idaho. Yellowstone is known for its gorges, alpine rivers and lush forests. Yellowstone National Park is situated on top of a supervolcano. Supervolcanoes are volcanoes that spew forth more than a thousand cubic kilometers of gas, ash, magma and rock. Lake Toba in Indonesia, Lake Taupo in New Zealand and Yellowstone National Park in the United States are all supervolcanoes that erupted within the last 100,000 years. Within the volcano system, there has been a massive and rapid uplift in the last seven months. This uplift is most likely caused by increasing magma beneath the surface. While there is no immediate threat of an eruption, geologists are keeping a tight eye on the situation. Join us as we venture to Wyoming to discover the breathtaking grandeur of Yellowstone National Park and learn more about the massive abrupt uplift in the volcanic system detected by Yellowstone National Park officials and the threat it poses. As the North American continent has drifted southwest, the Yellowstone hotspot has remained stable for a long period. The old eruptions in the Yellowstone region can be linked to what is today known as the southeastern part of Oregon. The most recent breakouts occurred in the northeast region of Wyoming, where the Yellowstone supervolcano has had three significant eruptions, the most recent of which occurred 640,000 years ago. The supervolcano is responsible for the park's hot springs, geysers, and other hydrothermal phenomena. The caldera, where the park is located, was also formed by the supervolcano. A caldera is a bowl-shaped depression formed when magma or lava is released from a volcano. Yellowstone's caldera is around 34 miles wide, and the supervolcano's last eruption followed a period of dormancy. The caldera filled with water over time, and forestation began, creating an ecosystem that is home to many diverse animal species. According to park experts, Yellowstone National Park is a safe haven for one of the world's largest supervolcanoes, which is showing signs of life. Yellowstone National Park was established in 1872 and is named after the yellow sandstone that is found in the area. The volcano is in the northeastern Wyoming, where the huge Yellowstone is confined. We know that the supervolcano sits on a hot region formed of molten and semi-molten rock known as magma, which explains how the ground lifts and sinks. When this magma pours into a magma chamber reservoir four to six miles beneath Yellowstone National Park, the ground swells. When lava cools and solidifies, the ground falls back down. Volcanologists have been studying volcanic activity since 1923, and between 2004 and 2009, the ground rose 9.8 inches. However, in 2010, the land began to subside, leaving many scientists wondering if the Yellowstone would erupt soon and how violent the eruption would be. Earth Sciences Professor of the University of Northern Colorado and renowned volcanologist Dr. Steve Anderson says, The big question is, if Yellowstone started shaking tomorrow, what is there to expect? He adds, I don't think we know exactly what to expect. However, scientists think it wouldn't be any less than a doomsday. The Yellowstone Plateau volcanic field is responsible for forming the high continental divide between the northern and central Rocky Mountains. The plateau has an average elevation of 7,900 feet and is surrounded on all sides by mountainous terrain with peaks as high as 13,000 feet, with the exception of the Eastern Snake River Plain, which spreads to the southeast as a structural depression about 350 kilometers long. For 2.2 million years, catastrophic eruptions, deep ground collapse, incredibly thick lava flows, ground raising and prolonged faulting and the erosive power of rushing water and ice have sculpted the 17,000 square kilometer Yellowstone Plateau. Dr. Jacob Lowenstern, scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory research geologist, 
explains that Yellowstone is currently an inactive volcano with low levels of restlessness, adding that there is no current activity going on that would indicate anything happening, and if something was coming, there is nothing to show at this point in time. Over the course of two million years, the Yellowstone Plateau volcanic region has experienced three volcanic cycles, two of which are considered some of the world's most catastrophic volcanic eruptions. Lava flows from the last 77,000 year old Pitchstone Plateau eruption were restricted to the caldera of what is now known as Yellowstone National Park. The first eruption occurred at the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff 2.1 million years ago, leaving a 75 kilometer wide crater and viscous volcano deposits. The second cycle began 1.3 million years ago when the Mesa Falls Tuff erupted. The last activity was reported on the Yellowstone Plateau 640,000 years ago when a lava creek erupted, forming a caldera 45 by 85 kilometers in size. Between 180,000 and 70,000 years ago, 600 cubic kilometers of rhyolitic lava flows rushed into the caldera. Since then, no magmatic eruptions have occurred. Nevertheless, hydrothermal explosions took place during the Holocene, which is the last 11,700 years of Earth's history. The two areas that have experienced uplift and subsidence of the ground surface are Mallard Lake and Sour Creek. In geology, these locations are known as resurgent domes. A resurgent dome is a dome-shaped feature that emerged as a result of the caldera floor expanding or rising as a result of a change in motion in the magma chamber underneath it. Currently, the geologic activity of the Yellowstone National Park is limited to hot springs and geysers. Yellowstone is currently one of the largest sites on Earth with the highest concentration of geysers and hydrothermal systems. The region is one of the most seismically active in the world due to the extensive networks of faults linked to the supervolcano and the surrounding terrain. Huge earthquakes frequently occur near the plateau close to the Teton and Hebgen Lake faults. The Hebgen Lake fault ruptured in 1959, severely damaging the region. Earthquakes occur when tectonic plates become caught at their edges due to friction and the tension on the edge overcomes the friction. Waves of energy are produced and move through the Earth's crust, causing the ground beneath us to tremble. Massive irregular solid rocks that comprise continental and oceanic lithosphere are known as tectonic plates. The University of Utah seismograph stations that oversee the operations and analysis of the Yellowstone Seismic Network recorded 59 earthquakes in the region in July 2022. The main event of the month was a small earthquake of magnitude 3.1 centered 14 miles southwest of the Mammoth Hot Springs section. Such earthquake sequences account for around half of all seismicity in Yellowstone. The Old Faithful is located in Yellowstone's Upper Geyser Basin and the park's southwestern area. It spouts more than 14,000 litres or 3,700 gallons of boiling water more than 30 metres up in the air every 91 minutes. It was discovered in 1870 by the Washburn Expedition. It was named after its recurring and predictable eruptions, which account for more than a million eruptions since Yellowstone was designated a park in 1872. The world's most famous geyser, Old Faithful erupts 20 times every day. These eruptions range in height from 100 to 180 feet, with an average height of 130 to 140 feet and a duration of one and a half to five minutes. Yellowstone remained at background levels of activity throughout July due to groundwater accumulation as reported by the GPS network. June was somewhat more eventful, with heavy rain and snow melting causing record floods in the Yellowstone region. Several landslides and rockfalls occurred between June 10th and June 13th, particularly on the northern border of Yellowstone National Park. Some roads and bridges were washed away, wreaked havoc on the region's infrastructure, and houses were severely damaged, isolating entire villages. The floods did not instigate any detrimental seismic activity, nor was the hydrothermal activity influenced in any way. There was, however, a major impact on geyser activity. Geysers began erupting more regularly because geysers emit more frequently during seasons of significant precipitation than during drier periods of the year. The timing shift is minor, but statistically significant. The steamboat geyser erupted twice in 2022, on June 10th and June 20th, with eight major outbursts. 
The University of Utah's seismograph stations located a tremendous number of 149 earthquakes. Since the summer began, GPS stations in Yellowstone Caldera and near Norris's geyser basin have recorded a few millimetres of uplift. This uplift occurs when snow melts and oozes into the ground, causing it to swell. There has been a trend of caldera subsidence of a few millimetres every year since 2015. The gradual subsidence of 2 to 3 centimetres, or 1 inch, has been recorded annually for the past couple of years. Experts say it's extremely unlikely that the Yellowstone supervolcano would erupt, but recent underground activity raises questions about how powerful it might be. While most of these earthquakes are hardly noticeable, they give scientists insight into how quickly the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is filling up, causing increased shaking and quivering throughout Yellowstone, which indicates that fresh puddles of magma recently drained into the reservoir. The past decade saw the fastest rate of ground surface rising in Yellowstone. Geologists find it challenging to predict the supervolcano's next move because it is impossible to monitor and analyse every minute detail of what is happening in Yellowstone National Park. Despite the increased number of tremors, experts say there are no foreseeable perilous circumstances as of yet or any time soon. Examinations of past eruptions, however, provide some insights. The three enormous eruptions within the last 2.1 million years had gaps of approximately 600,000 to 800,000 years between them. The effects of the most recent major eruption, which occurred 640,000 years ago, are felt throughout the entire park and thousands of miles away in the surrounding landscape. Each of the three treacherous eruptions spewed enormous amounts of volcanic ash, gas, magma and other volcanic debris that shrouded most of the continental US. The Yellowstone supervolcano fell on itself after each eruption, engulfing forests, mountains and everything else in the area. A caldera forming eruption would create a massive natural hazard in Yellowstone, according to scientists. The last Yellowstone eruption was a thousand times larger than the infamous 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption, which killed 56 people and thousands of animals and burned hundreds of square kilometres in Washington and Oregon. The last eruption from Yellowstone's supervolcano sent a lethal plume of hot ash particles, rock and toxic fumes thousands of metres in the air. One third of the continent was most likely engulfed in darkness. Swift currents of hot dry rock fragments and gases known as pyroclastic flows swept through the landscape, burying and ravaging all in their path. Yellowstone is currently dormant with scientists monitoring its every hiccup or cough and attempting to predict its next outburst. Although the brewing force beneath the park has been restrained for thousands of years, Yellowstone's dormancy does not imply that it will not resurface. The question is, when and with what fury? If an eruption were to occur, it would be a global tragedy. The supervolcano has the potential to produce lava flows that would cover entire states, as well as a cloud of ash and dust that would hide the sun and cool the Earth's climate. For the time being, park officials are advising visitors to remain vigilant and mindful of the possible hazard. Will the Yellowstone supervolcano erupt anytime soon? Tell us in the comments.